Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in again to part two of our contraception episode. Today we're going to be talking about the e-pill, male contraception and surgical contraception, so stay tuned. So let's start off today with the e-pill. So the EPIL is called emergency contraception or plan B in some countries. It's a very important pill and it's for emergency situations. So it's not supposed to be used as regular contraception. You're supposed to use it maybe one or two times a year because regular use of the EPIL actually uh, destroys the hormonal balance that you have in your ovary. Um, it's a very high dose of estrogen and progesterone and it could really disrupt your cycle and cause irregular bleeding several months later so it's supposed to be used actually in cases of emergency and we have three options to the e-pill you can either have an e-pill that has both estrogen and progesterone or you can have an e-pill that has high dose of progesterone only and we have a third option of an e-pill that has a hormone called ulipristal it's very important that you know the three different types of emergency pill the commonest is the one that has both estrogen and progesterone usually they are two pills they're taken 12 hours apart and they're supposed to be taken as soon as possible within unprotected intercourse now the longer time that you take past unprotected intercourse to take your e-pill the less the chances that it works so 24 hours is worse than 12 36 is worse than 24 and 72 is worse than 36 and so on and after 72 hours the efficacy is really low so it has to be taken almost immediately after unprotected intercourse now, um, there is a myth around e-pills and they say that e-pills, you know, um, cause infertility in future. This is not the case and there are very many high level studies that have been done that show that e-pills do not cause any form of infertility. However, they are affected by the weight of the person that takes them. So the um, heavier your BMI or the bigger your BMI, the less likely that the e-pill is going to work for you. And some doctors actually recommend that if you're over 85 kilos, you should not take the e-pill because the F efficacy is very very low. As much as we have hormonal methods of contraception, we also have non-hormonal contraception which is not a barrier method and for this we have the copper intrauterine contraceptive device. This is an intrauterine contraceptive device that lasts for 10 years inserted in your gynecologist's clinic. The insertion can be fairly painful but the IUD lasts for 10 years. The good thing about it is that it's completely non-hormonal but the downside is that it can cause quite a bit of heavy bleeding and cramping and spotting especially in the first six months when your body is actually trying to get used to it. You can have it removed at any time you wish to get pregnant before the 10 years are up and as I mentioned the good thing is that it's completely non-hormonal. Um, the bleeding can be quite a bit heavy with a copper IUD. You can get a little bit of cramping. So I usually like to observe my patients the first three months. That is treating for the bleeding and the spotting and the cramping. And I usually perform that in the next three months. And by six months, the patient is willing um, to see whether this is actually contraception that they're looking to take up for a longer time or whether this is contraception that they want to get rid of. When IUDs are inserted in general, the strings of the IUD are left a little bit outside the cervix, not too long into the vagina, and this enables the gynecologist to be able to retrieve it on the day of removal. The strings are soft and they should ideally not cause any problems for the patient or their partner during sexual intercourse. Now let's go straight into male contraception. Now male contraception is a very tricky topic because acceptability is a main issue in male contraception. Are men actually able to accept male contraception other than the condom and vasectomy? So we do have a number of methods of male contraception. However, most of them are part of ongoing studies. We really do need to understand are they working and are they reversible? Because these methods need to be reversible in order for them to be accepted acceptable for males. Now we have a number of methods, one of them being immunocontraception, which is basically where a man gets a vaccine in order to be able to produce less sperms, in order to be able to have contraception. Another drug that is very popular in China is called Gossipol and this drug has been shown to cause contraception in men as to its acceptability and reversibility again still undergoing very many studies. 
We also have injections called testosterone enanthate, where men receive actual testosterone injections such that the excess of the testosterone causes a form of infertility that is temporary. Again, the reversal and acceptability is an issue for men. We also have androgen and anti-androgen injections that are available for men um, to be able to cause infertility. And remember, every time you take a hormone, many times there's a risk for cancer. So that is another risk that men are looking at in terms of testicular cancer and that's another reason why it's not very acceptable to men. I hope it's clear about a few options that are available for men. Honestly, I don't uh, think many of them are available in Kenya other than the condom and vasectomy and that's where acceptability and you know reversibility come into play. Let's talk briefly about surgical contraception. In terms of surgery for contraception, these are what we call permanent methods of contraception. We have bilateral tubal ligation for women and vasectomy for men. For bilateral tubal ligation, it is really a surgery that is a day surgery. It's done laparoscopically, meaning it's done minimally invasively. We take a one centimeter incision in the belly button and two half centimeters on the sides. We envision the tubal, uh, the, the fallopian tubes, and we just resect both of them. And that's the end of the surgery. It's fairly quick. It's a day surgery. Um, you're in hospital maybe at most two hours if there are no complications. It's very safe. It doesn't affect your hormones afterwards. It doesn't affect your libido because many women are worried that it affects your libido after you have a tubal ligation. We are simply cutting the connection between the ovary and the uterus. We're not touching the ovary. We're not touching the uterus. We're not affecting the hormones in any way. So for those who are absolutely sure that they're done with having children, this is a really good method of contraception no matter what your age is as long as you're able to provide informed consent now for men there's a similar procedure it's called a vasectomy nowadays it's even done under local anesthesia it doesn't take too much time you're in hospital about an hour recovery is about one week and it's very effective um, in terms of causing contraception that is permanent now many times I get questions from patients are these methods reversible they are reversible but we do not encourage reversing these methods because we call them permanent and there are many risks involved with reversing the process especially for tubal ligation. First of all the process of reversal is extremely unsuccessful but in women it does predispose them to having ectopic pregnancies. So you might have a reversal that's incomplete or partial and then the ovum and the sperm fertilize in the fallopian tube and a pregnancy develops there and obviously this is not a pregnancy that can survive but also puts the mother's health at risk because if it ruptures she could actually die from the same in, in terms of bleeding and in terms of it being discovered way too late. So we do not encourage reversal of tubal ligation although it is possible and it's extremely unsuccessful. I hope now contraception is very clear to you. Please always have contraception counseling before you get any method of contraception. Have it with your gynecologist or any other medical practitioner so that it's clear to you which contraceptive you're choosing, what adverse effects to expect and how to go about it. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Your Free Consult and see you next time.